Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So today we're going to look into the new topic, which is designing and examining middleware in IoT. In the previous lecture, we already discussed many uh, diverse communication and wireless protocol technologies, software, uh, and available uh, that are available to designer when building the IoT system. Okay. So as we have seen, uh, there is no one solution for every situation. There has to be as a mind, and then it has to be um. Uh, plan properly uh, so that we are using the, the right protocol, the right technologies, the right software pattern to our system, okay, so that we can integrate everything together to make it uh, work. For example, in the proximity network, we may find a mixture of legacy and modern technology. Uh, some may, for example, not support IP uh, or wireless technology that we favor in our design, so we will have to mix and match technology. So this type of design is referred to as a heterogeneous design where we combine multiple types of protocol, technologies and software together uh, as it supports several, uh, if not may, diverse protocol, technologies and software pattern. Okay, so if it is just one type, uh, we call it as homogeneous design, right? So uh, for this IIoT, we are not able to use the homogeneous a homogeneous design it has to be heterogeneous design because it's it will involve a lot of sensors a lot of devices and a lot of um, what we call machines together okay so why do we need IoT middleware okay so if you can see this is showing the uh, what we call the device and all the layers until the IoT application so if you look into this uh, figure we are going to have a lot of devices uh, that going to be connected through the proximity uh, um, connection okay so uh, before it goes into the uh, until the IoT application Okay, so in order to, 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 to serve and also to make sure that all the system work, we need something in between that can work together, uh, all the protocols and everything so that, um, uh, what we call, uh, so that the system can work. So this is the purpose of the middleware. Based on the previous uh, figure also, it, is, it show how a high-level diagram uh, show the complexity of the technologies that we need to deploy in order co to construct an IoT network. In reality, if we want to build the IoT network infrastructure, it is a very difficult and highly complicated task as we are integrating many different technologies and protocol as well as having to find a way to administer, upgrade and report on this heterogeneous network um, therefore uh, as a solution uh, that can ease deployment complexity and provide not just the glue to connect all the components uh, but also looking um, uh, into the what we call enabling us to visualize the network in the entire entirety uh, this is the use of the IoT middleware platform okay so what is middleware? Middleware is a software that acts as a bridge between the operating system or database and application, especially on a network. So uh, what will be the pro uh, purpose of uh, middleware in the IoT? Uh, the purpose of IoT uh, middleware is to provide the integration, connectivity and data translation uh, that we require between the different technologies and layer because we know that uh, each system might use more than just one protocol and more than just one uh, software into uh, into the system okay so that's why we need the middleware to translate and integrate uh, all this into one uh, readable uh, what we call uh, readable and uh, a functional uh, system okay for example the middleware platform should be capable of handling connectivity from many different protocol and connectors as well as expose and consume api software connector okay uh, so to figure uh, the figure here show the functionality and interconnectivity of the middleware platform architecture so if you look into the picture here 
Okay, so it start with the connectivity of sensors and actuator, and then uh, it also perform the end node management. It manage all of the uh, sensors and all the actuator that connected to the system, and then it will be able to process and translate a correlation um, uh, in between these uh, end nodes. Okay, and then. Uh, perform the data integration of the uh, collected data, and then we'll be able to do the data visualization, uh, perform the analytics, and also um, uh, provide the API and microservices to the system. Okay, so apart from that, there will be a security that works along the way of the operation inside the uh, middleware here. For the middleware architecture component, uh, there are eight components that are de desirable in the end-to-end -end IoT middle, uh, middleware platform that we, we need to know. This element provides the glue that will allow us to build heterogeneous network at a large scale. Uh, so let us look into the first four uh, uh, component. The first one is connectivity. Okay, so the the, the layer provide the mean uh, to connect and support the sensors and actuator as they will often have diverse technology and protocol. Okay, so this middleware supposed to be able to connect all of the uh, end node together uh, so that it can be functional. Okay, so then end node management. Uh, this layer will provide the ability to identify, authenticate, authorize, and manage all the end nodes in the networks. For example, like um, uh, for example, when we're using the the bank account, okay, so uh, it's supposed to be able uh, to identify who is the user, and then we can uh, authenticate. For example, you have to put the username, and then you have to put the um, uh, what we call the the password and everything, so that uh, when it is correct, then you you can give the authorize uh, to to the user, and also manage all the uh, what we call the data input by the user. Okay, so this is uh, uh, fall under the end node management. Okay, the next one is data processing. Uh, this layer provides the data translation, preparation, and correlation of data coming from the sensors. Okay, so the, it's supposed to be able to process and uh, to do the data translation, and then yeah, you will prepare, uh, segregate all the information that needed, and then uh, it correlate all the data that coming from sensors. We know that there will be a lot of sensors, so it's supposed to be uh, able to capture all the data and then do the data processing uh, automatically. Okay, so the next one is data integration. Uh, once it's already do the data processing and everything, uh, they need the data integration where this layer provide connectors between application and data storage. Okay, so it's supposed to be able to combine and then integrate all of the information. Okay. The next one is data visualization. So this layer is supposed to be able to provide the tools and techniques so that the data can be visualized in the uh, in a minimal a meaningful way. For example, through graph, chart, and event. Okay. So if the data is not be able to visualize in the uh, uh, graph or chart and event, so it will be very difficult for the user to get all the informations. Okay. So that's why the middleware is very important to uh, to what we call to make the data visualization uh, possible okay so the next one is analytic so this analytic is the layer where it provides the real-time processing and analysis of the data okay so uh, we in the IOT we want the data to be in real time so uh, when the data coming from the sensor or from the uh, actuator and from all the devices, we are supposed to be able to look into the data right away, for example, so that we can whether we can do the analysis and make a certain action in real time. Okay, so then the the next one is front end. Uh, 
uh, which is the application uh, level layer which uh, provide the connectors, API, microservice and SDK interface required by the application and developer. Okay, so the last one is security where the security of the IoT network is paramount. We know is very important. If there is no security in the in the system, uh, your uh, data might be uh, there will be a breach of data to the to the competitor and every uh, everyone will be able to what we call uh, access to your data, right? So you, in the in the factory or in the industry, we don't want this thing to happen. So that's why um, middleware is supposed to be able to secure all of the data that being um, uh, what we call that, that has been uh, collected. So let us look into the role of IoT middleware platform. So there are three main uh, role in the IoT middleware platform. The first one is uh, interfacing of diverse protocol and technologies, translating and identification, authentication and authorization. Okay, so uh, the IoT middleware is supposed to be able to integrate all the protocols and technology together and able to translate and identify uh, the the what we call the data and also the the user that being using the the system uh, so then they can authenticate and also authorize the uh, usage of the data by the uh, author uh, to, to to the the correct user okay so second one is determina de determination of software uh, firmware level quarantine quarantining and remote provisioning and upgrades okay so the system is supposed to be able to identify whether uh, what is the software and firmware that being used and then uh, it will be able to quarantine uh, uh, all of the what we call uh, if let's say they detect any mistake or detect any um, threat that uh, uh, attacking the system or anything, they will be able to quarantine it. And then uh, it can also provide uh, uh, remote provisioning and upgrades to the system. Okay. So the last one is correlating and presenting data for processing and storage. So this is very important where it's supposed to be able to correlate all of the data that coming from all of the devices, from the sensors and everything. And then it's supposed to be able to present the data for processing and also for the storage uh, uh, into the system. Okay. So if you want to, to uh, summarize all this fundamental role of middleware, it can be um, summarized into three key, um, uh, what we call three points. Okay? So one is integration, second is secure monitor and report, and third one is real-time and batch data analysis. So this is the main, what we call role for the IoT middleware platform. Uh, two type of IoT middleware. One is open source IoT middleware, and another one is commercial IoT middleware. So let us look into open source IoT middleware first. Okay, so there are several mature open source solution for the IoT middleware, uh, which everyone can use it. Okay, so you can just subscribe to it, and then you will be able to use the uh, open source IoT middleware. Uh, there are four examples that I'm going to show you today. Uh, one is KAA, which is uh, it provides the tools to build complete industrial internet solution by interfacing transducer protocol and application. And it also provides the means to monitor and manage each remote devices. Okay. So the second one is Open IoT. Uh, which is an open source middleware platform for implementing and integrating IoT solution. Uh, and then it designed to able to connect to and then collect the process data from just about trend, uh, any transducer, regardless of its protocol. So it can be uh, connecting all of the transducer together, although they are using different protocol. Okay, so Open IoT can then stream the collected data to the cloud and then analyze and visualize the collected data. Okay, the next one is All Join, uh, a platform where it makes it easy for device to discover and communicate with one another 
regardless of the protocol manufacturer or the transport layer. And last one is Mango, uh, one of the most popular IoT uh, platform because uh, due to the tradition in the M2M, so meaning that it can integrate with the machine-to-machine uh, -machine, uh, integration. Uh, okay, so uh, and then and SCADA industrial environment where it has built up a huge uh, following due to its ease of deployment, low power use, and also the ability to host thousands of devices from one low cost PC. Okay, so that's why uh, it is very popular. The next one is commercial IoT middleware. So we already know about the open source. It is a, a already a ready-made, uh, uh, what we call uh, IoT middleware that uh, what we can see it is um, uh, a good solution if you want to to use it right away. Okay. So, but open source, um, although it is very popular, uh, it is not. Uh, always seen as the best solution for the industrial environment um, where we need reliability, availability and auto robustness uh, uh, based on the what we call certain uh, requirement that we need because the open one it is just uh, what we call it's a ready made so you can just use it uh, right away uh, without considering uh, what we call uh, the needs of your system or you, you might have to do something uh, to uh, tailor uh, the open uh, source one into system that you are going to use. Uh, consequently, many business will invest in commercial um, or call, uh, IoT middleware where uh, this one will be giving um, much more peace of mind to the technical and support uh, where because everything is tailored according to their need okay uh, some of the most popular commercial iot middleware platform are things works uh, oracle fusion ibm blue mix and many more okay uh, this commercial platform has more built-in features such as application enablement and uh, development tool as well as network and device management support uh, and are typically easier to deploy, but they come at a price because, of course, open source it is uh, free, right? So for this commercial, uh, it's come with additional, uh, what we call, uh, features to the system. Uh, so that's why it you you will have to uh, invest a little bit uh, if you want to use this commercial IoT middleware. However, the cost of licensing this product can often be cheaper than the cost and time spam deploying, testing, and supporting mesh up of open source packages. Okay, so there is a pro and cons. Uh, if you're using the open source, you might have to do some, uh, what we call, um, you have need, you have to hire someone, uh, that are capable of transforming all this open source into the system that you are using so that it is beneficial to your system. If you are using the commercial IoT middleware, it is uh, additional features and also uh, uh, features that is tailored to your need. Uh, then uh, uh, that done by the, what we call, by the people um, uh, that pro providing you the uh, middleware so then it will not be a, a hassle for you to to do to hire someone else to do uh, all the we call deploying testing and everything okay so the question is what are the protocol and language used in the middleware okay so this one you can um, say that the language and protocol that used in the middleware is the same is with the word that we already see uh, previously okay so check on the protocols all the protocols that we already learned so these are all the protocols that also use in the middleware now so what will be the difference between gateway and middleware if we look into the uh gateway and middleware it looks like the the what we call the um, the function is quite the same right so it's translating and do all the uh, correlating and everything right uh, between the get, uh, gateway and middleware so the answer will be uh, gateway uh, 
mostly convert information data or other communication from one protocol or format to another okay so but for the middleware there will be a lot more uh, what we call a role uh, of the middleware uh, for example uh, it do the integration secure monitor and report real time and batch data analysis and uh, we also can compare it with the eight component of middleware Okay, we can uh, relook again on the eight middleware architecture component, for example, the connectivity, front end, analytic, data visualization, data integration, data uh, processing, and endnote management. That's all for today. Thank you very much for listening. InshaAllah, we will see you again in the next class. Thank you. Assalamualaikum.